G'day guys, welcome to my channel again. I'm just going to um, quickly show a metal detector that I put together the last few days. Um, this particular detector is a uh, pulse induction type and it's uh, known as the uh, Mini Pulse Plus uh, detector. You can uh, purchase the uh, printed circuit board for this detector from uh, the United Kingdom. Well, you can purchase the uh, the parts as well if you want to purchase the uh, a complete kit. Yeah, I populated the board a few days ago, and I've been testing it uh, ever since, and uh, it seems to work quite quite well. Um, I'm getting about. 12 inches or uh, 30 centimeters on a small ring which is uh, like that one there um, pretty much the same on a coin perhaps a little bit less on a uh, typical coin um, just tonight I put it in the uh, in the case because uh, I've pretty much finished testing it uh, it all works according to the specification all the timing circuits are pretty much spot on. Um, I can get a reasonably short delay um, for small gold objects with uh, a homemade coil and also with a commercial coil tech uh, 11 inch mono coil. So um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I put it in a metal box because uh, I wanted to shield it a little bit from uh, stray RF fields that might be floating around and uh, it gives it a better look as well this particular there's a just go through it in a minute this particular box I actually had a few of them there's another one there exactly the same I purchased a few of these um, a couple of months ago and um, I'm, I'm building a receiver into one of them uh, shortwave receiver but um, I had this one spare so I thought I'd put the uh, detector in this particular box um, I don't know whether you can see it or not but what I've done is I've put a uh, sub panel in there which is under the board that's that metal panel you can see in there what that does is it splits the actual box in two halves so I've got a top half and a bottom half the uh, circuit board's actually uh, attached to the uh, top half and in the bottom half uh, I will put a battery which I'll show you in a minute it's a nickel uh, as you know it's a uh, lipo 12 volt lipo battery uh, 6800 milliamps or 6.8 amps and that will be permanently mounted underneath that uh, board underneath the panel there um, on the back we've got a little charging socket to charge the battery and of course the uh, connection to the coil uh, on the front we've got the uh, headphone socket on off switch which is not wired in yet LED which uh, hasn't been fitted yet the first control here is a the sample delay pot and the second control is the threshold control you can adjust the actual uh, threshold of the uh, the detector that's pretty much it I think There's not much more to show in there um, I built it and it worked first off hooked it up and everything was working fine right from the word go. Um, the only real adjustment that you have to do is this uh, small potentiometer there. Uh, you can do that using an oscilloscope. I used that particular oscilloscope there to make the adjustment. Or you can just also, well you can also adjust it on a very small piece of gold for maximum sensitivity which usually coincides with the um, shorter sampling delay. Um, this particular, sorry, this particular part here, the sample delay pot, 
actually connects to that potentiometer so you, you can actually adjust the uh, sample delay from the front panel um, the reason why they make that adjustable is you can actually tune out by adjusting the sample delay you can actually uh, not so much tune out but uh, make the detector less sensitive on like aluminium pull tabs for example and more sensitive on gold so that's why you have that you can kind of use it as a type of discriminator even though it's not really a discriminator okay here's the uh, this is a battery that will be going into this detector as you can see it's a well it's a Chinese battery it's quite reasonably cheap I think they're about $20 um, DC obviously uh, 12680 is uh, short for 12 volt 6800 milliamps um, if you, you probably can't see the spec there but it does actually say 6800 milliamps down there in small writing 12 volt DC um, this particular battery has a uh, the uh, output connector and it's also got a charge socket obviously I'll cut that off and attach it to the uh, socket on the back of the unit and cut this plug off and attach it to the uh, positive and negative wires okay we're back again here's the um, coil this was uh, an old, off an old detector that I had many years ago I think it was a whites or something like that I can't remember exactly now I basically just use the housing um, it's not so hard to make a coil it's very hard to make a housing for a coil that that's kind of decent so I had this old coil which was uh, off an old VLF detector cracked it open and took out the coil and everything and uh, put my own coil in there and uh, it's not totally finalized yet it's just a it's a work in progress so I haven't actually glued the covers back on together back together again here's the uh, the inside of the coil um, this is my own uh, coil here um, just as you can see it just consists of a certain amount of uh, turns of cable okay well, uh, with pulse induction metal detectors the coil is very very important and if the coil's not right, doesn't matter how good your detector is, it's never going to work properly. So, anyway, the coil basically consists of a number of turns of wire with certain inductance and a certain resistance. Now, this coil is not optimized for this particular detector at all. It's just one that I've been using with pretty much all my pulse induction detectors. It's, uh, it works on every detector I've ever put it on. So it's obviously a good compromise, but it's not perfectly suited to this particular detector yet. But it's performing quite well already. Um, apart from the um, coil winding itself, uh, these coils need to be shielded uh, a little bit to stop interference and that. Um, if they're not shielded, you have all sorts of problems with them out in the field. Um, this particular coil was actually shielded even when it was an original white's coil. The way they shielded it, they put some uh, graphite or like carbon type paint on the bottom cover and same on the top cover. That's that black stuff that you see there. And then what they do, they run, a, uh, run some wires along the top of the carbon on the top and bottom coil. They connect to the screen of the shield of the uh, connecting cable and then when you close that up it, it kind of shields that the winding and providing that the uh, you haven't got too much graphite there uh, it still is very sensitive and yet it kind of rejects the interference a little bit you can see how the connections are in there you can see how that works anyway I've also got a uh, let's say a coil tech 11 inch mono coil um, which is a commercial coil uh, which you would use on your typical mine lab detector and that works very well as well uh, surprisingly my little one here seems to work just as good so I'm kind of surprised by that um, but uh, yeah 
I haven't got that here right now, so I can't show you that, but we'll probably look at that when we do some testing with some actual gold and some coins and things, um, which will be in the next video. Anyway, that's all for now. Hope you uh, enjoyed the tour of this particular detector. I know uh, one of the reasons for making a video on this particular detector is that um, I did quite a bit of a search on YouTube and there was absolutely no video on the Mini Pulse Plus detector on YouTube that I could find. So that's why I decided to put one together. So yeah, next week I'll come back with another video uh, with this all connected up and showing the waveforms on the oscilloscope up there showing the coil detector in operation detecting stuff you get a bit of an idea of uh, what the uh, detection uh, distance is and uh, yeah we'll, we'll do that next week sometime thanks for watching and look forward to chatting with you again next time